let me tell you the true story of Lazarus the Les Paul, and I've never told anyone this story before. So it's December 2019, and I get a call from my buddy who's a guitar tech up the street named David Neely. And David Neely is a good old Southern boy with a lot of history. He's done guitars for Bob Dylan and Neil Young and Jerry Garcia and David Gilmour and Keith Richards and on and on and on, a Hollywood classic. And before we get too into the lore, this is my Gibson Les Paul, and I bought this one new in 1981. So one day, David Neely calls me and says, Scott, buddy, you know a lot about Les Pauls, don't you? And I said, yeah, about kind of a lot. So I said, all right, David, I'll be right over. So I walk in and I see this abortion. So what you see is a nasty, Krylon candy apple red spray painted Les Paul. And if you look at the details, there's overspray. It's all over the binding. It's in the cavities. It's even on the fretboard. And I'm like, what is this? And he goes, take a good look at it. Really? And you know what? We can uh, zoom in on all the parts too. Yeah. I can, this phone's actually doing not a half bad job. And as I picked up this disaster, I turned on the light on my iPhone, the flashlight, and the first thing I noticed was the dots on the side of the fretboard. You see these, the fret markers? And I noticed under the light that they were tortoise shell, and I don't doubt you can see them on here, but on other Les Pauls, they're usually black. And instantly I said, give me a screwdriver. And David hands me. David hands me a Phillips head screwdriver, and I proceed to take this plate off. And I take a look at the potentiometers, and they say 759, indicating that they were made in the seventh month of 1959. Now, for those who haven't swiped away yet, this is the Holy Grail. The 1959 Les Paul is to electric guitars what the Stradivarius is to violins. It is the Holy Grail of all Holy Grail. I think they made about 640 of them ever, and most of them are accounted for. This is arguably the most famous one, Jimmy Page's legendary Les Paul 59 burst, which he bought from Joe Walsh. I said, David, where did you get this guitar? And he says, oh, this guy bought it. This guy stood up with a rattle can full of Krylon and threw it in the closet. And that's where it's been sitting all these years. And he decided he just wanted to get it repaired and cleaned up for his son. I said, does he know what this is? He goes, I don't even know what this is. And I said, I'm not sure either. So David says, let's go to Hollywood Gun Club. I said, what's Hollywood Gun Club? He said, it's a quarterly uh, get together at a restaurant called Baroni's in Valley Glen, California. And we go and eat, it's a red sauce joint. We go eat Italian food and everybody looks at their, does show and tell with their guitars. So we walk into Baroni's restaurant and I see this guy, Joe Bonamassa. And he says, hey, what's in that stone case? Which and I said, what's in that black case, Joe Bonamassa? And he said, this here is Tommy Bolin's burst with a factory Bigsby. And here's a close-up of it. Pretty nice cherry sunburst, right? So I say, uh, I think we have a 59 Les Paul burst here. And he said, eh, let me see it. So he turns on the light on his iPhone, and he's looking at this Krylon spray job, and you can hear his side of the story uh, on YouTube if you look up Joe Bonamassa Lazarus. And I said, look, it has 759 pots. And he says, well, that doesn't mean anything. These pots were sitting in containers, and it could, have be, it could be a 60, it could be later. You know, that doesn't mean anything. So I said, all right. And then he shines his flashlight on that red Krylon finish, and he goes, yeah, that's not, there's no flame under there. And I said, how can you tell it's spray paint? He said, nah, I, I can tell. But it turns out there was more than just a little bit of flame on this top. And a guy named Kim LaFleur in uh, Florida did this incredible restoration of Lazarus, which I believe is still Joe's number one main guitar. So the following morning, David Neely calls me again. He goes, Scott, buddy, Joe B's coming down to the store. Why don't you come down and bring your camera? I said, okay. So I go down there, and here it is. All right, David Neely here with my good buddy, Joe Bonamassa. We've known each other for 20 years. Yeah. And uh, Joe is the expert on these Les Pauls, along with some of his buddies. We've had Joe look at this, and uh, I think he's tempted to buy it. Well, what, what, what do we have here? It's just a red husk. It's a well, carcass. I, to me, to me, what this is is the latest it could be. 
is probably what people refer to as a double O60, meaning that it was 59 spec with a fat neck, but a 1960 serial number. You're, you're, this is this is definitely a burst, or was a burst at one point. Um, your your tenon tells me that there's a few telltale marks in here. Um, it's had a headstock break. It's had extremely tough life. Um, extremely tough life. This is probably the toughest. Other than the one I saw that one time that was converted to a base, this is probably the toughest life. That, that, We're not going to do that. No. Um, good news is your pickups are right. Double blacks. Your rings are right. You know, um, if they were double whites, it would scream early '60s, but they're not. Um, your pots, I believe, we dated them to. The seventh week of 59 it doesn't tell you that this is a 59 though because if we know anything they didn't they didn't get the pots in and use them all at the same week so okay. there are this is a 59 harness spray yeah spray, and it's original so that's good for red. the guitar yes you want your truss rod covers correct um what else is what we got here the harness you got a the bridge part of a wiring harness you got four original knobs, you got your long studs. There's the broken tailpiece. And the broken tailpiece, which I don't know how hard you'd have to hit this to break the tip off, but once again, bolstering the fact that this thing has had a very tough life. Yep. Um, you know, one of the things about this is, is it doesn't appear to be very flamey because the finish is very thin and you'd see ripples underneath that. But, you know, if I owned it, I'd scrape the binding and leave it red. What else are you going to do? Just get it up and run it and play it. Um, exactly what I'm thinking. It, it's it's, it's not got a, some strings on it, pickups in it. It's not it's not a guitar that it will ever be perfect again. It's too far gone, but it's but it's a real guitar, and you know a lot of people go through a lot more than this to to determine whether the guitar is real or not. But it's a real guitar. You know, it's, everything's there. It just had a very tough life. So, yeah, I think it would be a great player. It's a perfect player. Instead of a collectible kind of worship yeah, it's, guitar. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a it's a throw in the gig bag and go. Hell you know, yes. You got a you, you, you got a applied gotta, for stop tail piece. You, you, you got a broken headstock. You got <laughs> you got a Krylon finish on it. It's, it's all right. So Joe, how, how Joe, how often do do fifty eight to sixty bursts just sort of emerge in my world? Yeah. Six times this year. That were that were previously unknown. In my world. Three times this year. Okay. Is this one of them? This is the fourth. Okay. They built a lot of guitars. And um, this is very cool to find in this condition because you would never do this to a $200,000 original Sunburst guitar. But once once it's over, it's... Yeah, I know. And you, and you, it's, you, it's, a, of, it's a little more invasive to try to remove all this. Well, I, it, it, it really doesn't matter at that point. I mean, yeah. you, could, you could just... You could just I, if it was me, I'd just scrape the binding, get it, get it so there's some contrast, and um, maybe <laughs> I don't know, do something with this. They gotta do this. They gotta do this cherry, and the neck cherry. Yeah, I mean it's it's, it's got, and hide this damage. Well, you know, I mean, or or you can or you can just paint everything black in the back, and then have a black and red, you know. But it's a burst. It's definitely a burst. I've seen enough of these things. No, it was a burst. Yeah, I can just imagine. Now it's red. <laughs> pulling this out for your gigs. It's not a gold top because a lot of times, you know, it's impossible to get all that gold top, that gold flake out of the, the cabin. And this, this is this is the only part of the finish that's original in here. So we're looking yeah. at here. Um, so it would, if it was a gold top, it would reveal itself in there because you would see it even if they, even if they OCD'd it, you'd still have gold flakes in here. In here. But so it was a sunburst at one point. Yeah. And it was originally, it was originally a. Um, Stop tail, no Bigsby ever put on there because your ground. I can look. I'm looking in here to see your ground wire goes right to the mm -hmm. Bigsby's. They come through. The ground wire comes through here. Factory Bigsby's. Never before seen. We all know the end of the story. Joe and David and the and the uh, owner made a deal on it. The price. It's not my place to disclose. Um, but Joe got the guitar, had this beautiful restoration done, and uh, he plays it on stage most every night.